Hello, hello, Mordimers here, and welcome to another gameplay during the Legends of Chess tournament. That, that is the online tournament, rapid time control, and the tournament is organized by chess24.com platform, and it's part of the Magnus Carlsen Chess Tour. Um, and I would like to show you the game between two Peters. Uh, Peter Svidler, a Russian grandmaster, well-known commentator, the, um, the chess commentator, um, and his ranking, rapid time control ranking, 2742, he is already 44 years old, but he was one of the strongest players in the world. Um, for example, one of his most impressive achievements was winning uh, eight times the, the Russia championship so he was the champion of russia for the eight times that's pretty impressive uh in this game he's gonna play as white and his opponent another peter peter leko from hungary uh, and at the beginning of this century peter leko was one of the strongest players in the world he was for the quite long time in the top five um, of the players here is a uh, Wonderful theoretician, he knows a lot of openings, the ideas, and uh, he's uh, extremely dangerous till now. Definitely the legends of chess. And also, Peter Leko was a challenger to the world champion title. He had the chance to play against Vladimir Kramnik uh, in 2004, and he actually drew that uh, match 7-7, seven to seven, and that means uh, Vladimir Kramnik remained the world champion. So, uh, Peter Leko, one of the strongest players on this planet, some of the grandmasters, some of the commentators um, uh, were saying that uh, he just doesn't believe in himself that he can play as strong as Kasparov, uh, Kramnik, Anand and other world champion. But in the truth, uh, he really can. Just, you know, this little detail uh, prevented him from, from becoming the world champion. So two uh, legendary uh, Peters uh, gonna play in this game. So let's see what happened on the board. Peter open with knight on f3 and peter answer with knight on f6 so a uh, pretty uh, symmetrical opening we have ready on the board and now g3 uh, c5 bishop on g2 and now knight on c6 uh, we have castle e5 c4 and if you look at this position, White actually played the Sicilian defense, uh, just you know reversed with the with the e5 and and c4. So uh, it's just reversed. So White has one extra tempo, uh, and Black. What Black playing is interesting. Marozzi bind. For those you don't know, Marozzi bind is the c4 uh, and e5 uh, as White against the Sicilian defense. The point is to control the four uh, and in the, that case of course uh, d5 uh, which makes the the life of the opponent quite you know difficult and uh, and that's quite interesting marozzi was the hungarian so as you see peter leko plays also just kind of hungarian uh, opening uh, we have d5 c takes on d5 knight takes on d5 and now knight on c3 challenging this knight uh, and here bishop on e6 giving them the over protection and here knight on g5 this is the actually the main line uh, and it's just the fancy way to exchange the pieces so uh you cannot play something like knight on c3 with the attack on the queen because simply d takes on c3 queen on d1 rook on d1 uh, and white can double the pawns on the on the c file or maybe on the e file this way as well this rook is in the central controls the the only open file so white just stands better so it doesn't make much sense this is why the only line in this position is queen on g5, exchanging this way, uh, and now knight on d5. Keep in mind that the, the bishop controls d5 as well. Uh, queen on d8, and now knight on e3. So this knight made, a, you know, quite a journey uh, to, to e3. Uh, however, uh, look at the position. White exchanged uh, one of the most important defenders of the position and black as well. But white uh, knight is already on e3, you know, staring on the on the king side. Uh, and black at the same time doesn't have this uh, very important uh, knight on the f6. Uh, and it's pretty important and you will see why. 
uh, rook on c8 and now we have b3 bishop on d6 developing and bishop on b2 pretty natural uh, we have castle and this position was actually rich uh, by Lajos Portis um, famous uh, Hungarian one of the strongest Hungarian grandmasters uh, in 70s uh, and he played that as black uh, against Jan Timan and Jan Timan play a queen on e1 with the idea of f4 bring the the queen to to f2 uh, and if this pawn uh, is exchanged and this is you know uh, Marozzi bind pawn so it's uh, very important to actually exchange it and if it's exchanged uh, then also king can move to h1 the rook can come to 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 semi open g file um, and attack on the on the position of the king you know after exchanging the pawns here so this was the idea of the quite the famous game because it's still in the databases even it was played in 1978 uh, but here Peter Fiedler just uh, simply uh, continued development so rook on c1 taking the the rook to the to the c file uh, and now we have b5 uh, grabbing the space on the queen side and also preparing c4 it can be very naughty because this bishop you know supports this this attack majority attack on the queen side uh, so Peter Fiedler tries knight on d5 getting the, the knight to the center cutting this diagonal uh, and asking black maybe you want to exchange this precious uh, bishop for my knight uh, and Peter Leko answered okay but let me first uh, solidify my position make it more solid so you don't have any counterplay uh, we have e3 and look at this it looks like uh, Peter Fiedler just invites actually uh, black to exchange this uh, this bishop for the knight because there is a very very nice tactic so bishop on d5 bishop on d5 and look at this you see already this hole it just look horrible so we have knight on b4 with the attack on the on the bishop with the attack on a2 and also uh, with the threat of jumping to d3 and the threat is pretty serious because uh, it's forking the, the the rook and this extremely strong bishop on b2 and it's very very strong bishop believe me uh, so bishop on e4 uh, moving the bishop and also controlling d3 and peter leko okay i'm just gonna win the pawn in this position so we have knight on a2 rook on a1 and knight go back to b4 uh, defending a6 uh, we have bishop on c3 uh, attacking the knight uh, defender of of a6 uh, but now simply a5 and this pawn is just safe uh, we have queen on e2 improving the position of the queen and attacking the pawn on b5 so another weakness and queen on b6 defending and for now the queen works as a you know babysitter of these two little pawns uh, which is the main idea uh, in the Peter Sfiedler's plan he plays f4 so he starts the attack on the on the king sides and it's very very dangerous attack as I said there is no knight on f6 the queen is far far away a babysitting the 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 pawns uh, so also the knight is far far away and this bishop watching on the on the king side so look at this what would you play now as black how would you defend this pawn for now the pawn is attacked twice so a black has to do something about that uh, and it's very difficult for example f6 completely doesn't work queen on h5 is just deadly uh, threatening uh, very simple you know uh, queen on h7 so g6 but then bishop on g6 uh, and if black takes actually then uh, queen on g6 and it's completely lost position king on h8 uh, and now f takes on e5 uh, f takes on e5 rook on f6 actually attacking the bishop so black would be forced to take and now with tempo um, check with tempo king on h7 and now queen f5 winning the material back uh, so for example king on g7 and position of white is completely winning one extra pawn um, and being the up the exchange that's usually enough to to win the game and if black doesn't take uh, on g6 and try to defend it also doesn't work because of bishop on f5 uh, and now this is a this is a pretty nasty threat so probably rook on e7 uh, but then f takes on e5 uh, bishop on e5 let's say bishop on e5 f takes on e5 and here 
bishop h7 sacrifice the material uh, and after rook on h7 you probably see that already rook on f8 king on f8 and now rook on f1 and believe me or not it's forced checkmate in eight moves so uh, i'm not gonna show you the the the, the rest but as you see the queen controls uh, all of these squares uh, over there uh, you even cannot go to to e7 because you're gonna lose the rook for free uh, and over here is the checkmate in in eight and it's just forced so we know already that f6 doesn't work uh, e takes on f4 it looks even worse because of the all these bishop now have the open diagonals so for the same reason queen on h5 and after g6 queen h6 now this is a checkmate threat so pretty serious but after f6 the same bishop on g6 wins the game and i'm not gonna show you all the lines but it's it's pretty much the same so the only move in the in this position is actually defend this pawn but which rook don't take you know the wrong rook and there is only one uh, rook which can defend and it's rook c on e8 rook c on e8 is is the correct move it's very important to actually keep this rook on f8 as a defender of f7 very important because now after queen on g4 it looks like it's it's a very very dangerous however after bishop on c7 uh even white uh, you know make some moves take on e c e5 and and try to move like e6 uh black gonna have the time to bring the the queen for example to h6 and defend the position so uh, everything is completely fine with this position however it's a it's a it's a quite you know uh, sharp and risky position so rook c on e8 should be played however the problem is peter leko goes for a rook f to e8 uh, and here is the problem this is the losing move so feel free to pause the video and find the winning continuation for white while i enjoy my cup of tea Okay, ready? So the winning move, uh, probably those who, who saw the and remembers the thumbnail, uh, that's the Greek gift, uh, bishop on h7. Uh, and after king on h7, queen on h5, king on g8, and now f takes on e5 with the attack on the bishop, but also uh, with the attack on f7. Uh, and black cannot you know defend that uh, for example rook on c7 uh doesn't work because e takes on d6 queen on d6 and now rook f5 and that's just one of the ways of course uh, g6 doesn't work because it's a checkmate on h8 as this bishop supports uh, also uh, this way uh for example queen on g6 trying to exchange the queens but then all the all the queen side just just collapse so rook on e5 uh and even after exchange then another pawn is under attack and it's not much black can do about all of that for now uh white has one extra pawn but they're gonna have uh, two extra pawns and the completely winning position so rook on c7 doesn't really work uh Peter Leko tries g6, attacking the queen. So now, okay, saying uh, my bishop is under attack, your queen is under attack. What are you gonna do? Uh, and here, feel free to pause the video one more time and find uh, the most fancy way and the, and, the, and the best move actually in this position for white while I enjoy my cup of tea one more time. Okay, ready? So the best move in this position is simply uh, queen on h3. And it's extremely strong move, not only because of the of the checkmate on h8, that's the that's the obvious threat, but also uh, if black decide to take the take the pawn on e5, which is the best move in the position, white can take this bishop uh, and then the checkmate is still on the board. So black would be forced to take the bishop and then this rook on c8 is hanging. So uh, white can win this way or even stronger, rook takes on f7 and the checkmate on h7 is the, is the very serious threat. So king on f7 and look at this this queen is hanging on b6 okay this is the loose piece so queen on h7 that is the idea uh, and now 
the bishop cannot go to g7 because you know that would be a free bishop uh, if king goes to f8 or f6 then rook gonna join the party and uh, and just win the game so finally after king on e6 queen on g6 wins the the queen very nice skewer so that was the strongest idea in the position uh, keep the the queen you know um, on the h file keep an eye on on c8 square and uh, that would be you know uh, ju just winning Peter Fiddler found another way there is other way also uh, to continue the attack a queen on f3 threatening the, the attack on f7 uh, and also you know uh, the bishop is still under attack so black has to decide what to do now we have f5 uh you know moving the moving the pawn and also asking hey maybe you want to you know uh take and pass on. however of course white are not interested we have e takes on d6 uh, and now queen on d6 was possible however uh, g4 is extremely strong uh you know eliminating the the pawn shelter from this king and this king could be completely naked uh and that's just unplayable black could play something like knight on d5 trying to eliminate the bishop but bishop can retreat uh, and after let's say knight on e7 uh, giving extra defense uh, white actually can play queen on h3 and you see already this threat is extremely uh, dangerous so probably king on f7 trying to run but then uh, rook on a8 uh, and this rook gonna you know just devastate the, the queen side or rook to a7 that's even stronger pinning the knight and also controlling d7 so so the king cannot escape from this dangerous attack so uh Queen on d6 is just bad because g4 is extremely strong. So uh, Peter Leko tries to stop that. We have rook on e4 now controlling g4. Uh, but now Peter Spiedler plays uh, queen on g2. Silent move, very strong. Now queen on h3 with the attack on h8 is extremely um, dangerous. Uh, and now uh, we have knight on d5. So Peter uh, Leko tries to get some counterplay and first eliminate this dangerous bishop uh, however white has very interesting um, idea here because look at this this rook is hanging this queen is hanging and this knight is also hanging all of these are loose pieces so uh, black are in the very very vulnerable position we have simple d3 and now if the rook is moved then of course the knight is lost so uh, Peter Leko doesn't have much choice we have knight on c3 and now simply d takes on e4 winning the exchange we have knight on e4 so the knight is in very very nice outpost however uh, it doesn't really matter because g4 it's still on the board and it's extremely dangerous and in this position black doesn't have any um, defending possibilities uh, g takes on f5 gonna be played in the next move so uh, peter leko tries c4 creating the past pawn as a counterplay uh, we have g takes on f5 and now queen on e3 with check king on h1 and in this position peter leko resign as he cannot you know defend against g6 so let's say c3 making this past pawn uh, and then queen on g6 uh, wins the game king on f8 uh, and then simply f6 and this is a this is a checkmate and it's not easy to to stop it knight on d6 maybe this way because now queen controls e7 but that's not enough uh, because queen on g7 king e8 rook a on e1 winning the queen um, and of course the game so uh, that was not possible uh, and also if black tries something like like g5 as the as the pawn is defended then simply rook a on d1 uh, and black gonna lose this knight for free uh, and of course being up the rook is enough to win the game this is why after king on h1 peter leko resigned uh, and i would like to show you the the results from the from the round two Jan Nepomniaci won against Ding Liren so Ding Liren lost another match another day and he's in the very very critical uh, situation Jan Nepomniaci just uh, very easily won first two games he just got the the easy draw in the in the third one Ding Liren again doesn't have the best uh, performance in 2020 he plays you know very unstable some of the tournaments he plays good uh, some you know he he get the the losing position pretty easily uh so something is wrong about that 
Uh, Vasil Ivanchuk lost to Ber Boris Gelfand. Boris Gelfand uh, got another three points. And, and here, as you see, Peter Spiedler uh, got also three points. Uh, Peter Leko actually won one of the games. Peter Spiedler won two games. So uh, very sharp, very sharp match. Uh, and also Magnus Carlsen won in the last game of the match against Vishwanathan Anand. Vishy had the winning position against Magnus Carlsen. He, had, uh, he couldn't actually find the right continuation and Magnus Carlsen found the mating idea and won against Vichy. So Vichy uh, also lost uh, two days in the row. Um, a very dramatic uh, situation and Anish Giri won against Vladimir Kramnik. So uh, I would like to also show you the standings. So Magnus Carlsen, Boris Gelfand, Peter Svidler six points, Janne Pomniasi five points. Anish Giri, 3 points, Peter Leko, 2 points, um, Vladimir Kramnik, Vasil Ivanchuk, 1 points, and at the end, at the bottom of the of the standings, Vichy Anand and Ding Liren, 0 points. So definitely not the best start into the tournament, but we still have 7 rounds and everything can happen. So if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss any other reports from this tournament and other tour tournaments press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one